as part of our target before the year ends. Masaka Microfinance Development and Cooperative Trust Limited, Mami Dikot, is soon becoming a household name to the residents of Masaka. This is one of the outreach circles that receives support from the government. It started from rented premises, but with the government push and people's savings, it has now got its own home. The circle offers products like solar, agricultural, school fees, development and ordinary loans to its clients. It had a humble beginning, but with time, it has become a favorite for the population, who in trying to develop themselves, found it hard to access financial support from the traditional banking institutions. We have met at least 90% of our objectives because we have seen ourselves helping ourselves, including me. We have been able to change the lives of very many people in the rural areas. We have branches, we have opened the branches to serve the rural people. We have a branch in Lukaya, we have a branch in Kalungu. On the 3rd of July, we opened a branch in Komasibi. So we are really, as it were, helping the government to take the services closer to the people. Investment in education is now prioritized in the central region. Victoria Sako in Rakai district has helped entrepreneurs like Christine Ayesiza. Ayesiza started the Dembe Yabato Day Care Center, which has over 248 children. Her belonging to Victoria Besson Savings and Microfinance Cooperative Trust Limited has ignited her investment spirit and is now set to leave the hired premises after buying her own structures. Renting was not easy for me. Renting this building and renting the other one. I said, what can I do? I said, let me go back to Victoria. I went back. I got seven million. They gave them to me. I went and I bought two blocks. Besides that, Aya Caesar has a border border project and a second hand shoe shop in Kalisizo where she is able to make an extra coin. The West Nile region lies west of the Nile River across Pakwaj Bridge and Laropi Ferry in northern Uganda. Here we find Nebi District which has embraced the circle model as a way of transforming the people in the sub region. At least three circles here have been identified and supported by the government. Panyamori Circle sits on the banks of Lake Albert and shares its border with the Democratic Republic of Congo. The population here is predominantly a fishing community. It also attracts the population from the Democratic Republic of Congo, which transacts business with the natives. It has a great potential for development, especially in the fishing sector. We talked to one of the fishermen whose world has come with the circle movement, and this is what he had to say. For the first time, I borrow one million from the circle, and I put it, I put it on this work, fishing and I benefit from the fishing and after that I send my children to the school which at this moment I was paying 150 in senior one. Animal traction in this sub-region has helped crop farming gain fame. Most farmers took advantage of the intervention, organized themselves into groups to access funding, and it is through this that they got money and left the handhold for increased production. Well, we found that farming using animal traction is far better than what we were been doing with this local hoe. As I talk now, from a half an acre digging with the hand hoe, I can now able to talk in commercial farming of 10 acres. Further north is Kitgum Circle in Kitgum District. The district is one of the many districts that are recovering from the effects of the Pony insurgency and its population is slowly settling down for production. 
It serves most of the population that suffered the Kony mayhem and is helping them to recover. The circle which sailed through the rough times of the insurgency was the only one looked at by the population they have come to own. It had assets worth 10 million shillings seven years ago, but it now boasts of a saving portfolio of 2 billion shillings. Our membership has increased to 11,000 members. We have three branches. One has this one, eight of these, then three at the two, two at sub counties. Our saving portfolio has gone up to two, two billion. Then the share capital is 634 million. Then our portfolio stands at 1.9 billion. Maurice Opera is an entrepreneur who has benefited from this circle. His investment in education started with the financial institution where he invested in nursery education. Today, he has two nursery schools and one of the leading primary schools in the district. The total amount of loans we've got so far, I should say 61 million. That's the total loan that we got. And uh, looking at uh, how far we've gone, I think I'm so grateful. Without this circle, I don't think we would have really grown, uh, grown all that much. Uh -huh. We have done a lot of development. Parents and other people are even wondering how we, are, I mean, how we manage to achieve all this. Since he selected his enterprises very well, Opira has never borrowed from any other financial institution apart from the Kitgum Circle. In the eastern part of the country is Bululu Mart Papas Cooperative Limited. Located in Kaberamaido district, the circle is answering the development needs of over 800 members. This circle has mainly concentrated on the plight of farmers who are the majority in the country. Farmers who have grown with this circle have nothing to regret but to only encourage others to join them. Charles Kazikazi is an all-round farmer who knows how to take advantage of the population around him. I was able to buy a grinding mill out of that profit. I was able to, to buy a plot in the town with that, that loan I borrowed. Then I started developing it. I'm doing very well. All my children are, are in school, in boarding school, all of them out of Bululu Multipurpose. The story of the successful circles in the recent past is an unending one. However, along the way in the building of circles, some people have failed to see the benefits that accrue from belonging together. On the other hand, some have been fleeced of their resources. These are among the challenges faced by the Rural Financial Services program in trying to boost them. All this calls for patience, as good things do not come in one day. The biggest challenge is that the, 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 the number of SACOs has grown too quickly relative to the kind of institutions that we would need to put in place to protect members' savings. The establishment of a savings and credit society is actually a process. It is a process which begins by mobilizing communities. It is a process which begins by identifying the people who are serious, who have something to do in terms of business or in terms of production. It is a process which involves members to agree to work together as cooperators. The anxiety caused by the prosperity for all has aroused the population's need to have money. This pressure is felt in every circle, demanding for more sensitization on how to deliver the service amidst the elastic demand. In most cases, uh, you'll find where the, the, the program has been misinterpreted or misconstrued to mean uh, free money, and you'll find people waiting for either government officials to carry sacks of money to take the rest. And, and I want to say that uh, the Rural Financial Services Program is based on two key things. One is the grant scheme, which helps institutions to grow and be strong. And the second one is enabling 
their institutions to access uh, wholesale finance, which they, ha which they supplement on their first line of defense, which are the savings. All hope is not lost yet. The birth of these circles takes pride in the desire by people to develop themselves. Since they are for the people, they will enjoy their support and grow to serve their interests. This localization has created a clientele that is reliable as the management of the circles is able to monitor and make follow-ups. The interaction between management and its clients has built trust among the two parties and circles are now a weapon for development. Let us embrace the circle model as belonging together pools resources, leads to good bargaining and closes the gap in information flow. Remember, information is power. Saving is the way even poor people can save. And saving is a culture. Don't wait for tomorrow because you'll be left behind and you'll be lamenting that all oh, maybe money was given to some people. The prosperity for all is for all, not for some.